Hi everyone, so I'm back with another tutorial. Uh, the last one I did was of the leopard eye, and I'm going to be kind of doing the same sort of thing, but the last one focused more on shorter fur and around the eye, and then this one it's more focused on medium length, the kind of long fur. Um, but they're both pretty much the same thing. They both do the same, they both require the same technique, and it's it's very similar. So, so for this one, it's going to be the same thing, as I said. So the same tools are required. So basically what I'm using is a handmade embossing tool. So you can get embossing tools um, pretty much anywhere, any craft stores or online like Amazon. Um, but I wasn't really aware of those at the time when I started doing this technique. So I made my own out of a nail that's hot glued into an empty pen cartridge. So you can make it yourself if you want. Okay, so how this technique works, is, for those of you who don't know, it's what, what you're doing is you're indenting the paper that you're working on. So you do have to have relatively thicker paper. Um, so you have to do it by feel. Something like printer paper or just standard art paper isn't thick enough and you won't actually be able to get a good enough indent. So the way it works is because you're indenting the paper with your tool, it's leaving uh, high spots and then valleys. So when you go over it with your pencil or charcoal or graphite or whatever you're using, the charcoal will stick to the high points and then leave the low points white. And then from that, you can get the, the very distinct fur. Um, yeah, the very distinct fur hairs. And then you can just layer it and layer it. And then you get the, the look that you want to. And because it's very sharp, um, it looks a lot more realistic than using just uh, an eraser. Because you can't get quite as white or as sharp lines as doing this. However, to get actually realistic looking fur, this isn't the only thing you have to do. Um, there's many more factors to making fur look really realistic. So, like I had mentioned in my other video, uh, understanding fur direction and layering the fur is a huge, huge part of it. It's probably even more important than, than doing this, this process. So as you saw at the start of the video, I started at the bottom part of the page and then I've been working my way up. So the reason I'm doing that is because um, fur, it overlaps. It'll be like uh, the fur that's further down is going to be overlapped by fur over top of it and it creates these layers. And you have to try and recreate that yourself. So by doing that, you start at the furthest point of your drawing and then you work your way in. So as we saw with um, the eye, you start at the further part, so you would actually start at like the edge of the head and maybe the bottom of the chin and then you would work your way into a center point which would be either the eyes or maybe the middle of the nose. Um, but for this you're doing the same sort of thing. So you're starting at the bottom of the leg, so this is a leg you start at the bottom and then you work your way up until you get into the shoulder um, or until you get to the um, most front part of, of the picture. So maybe if it's like at the elbow or something. So from here I'm started further down and then I'm moving, slowly moving upwards. And you also want to kind of go left to right as well. You don't want to just go straight up in a straight line. So here it's a little bit more zoomed in so you can actually see the, the fur being created. Now also you don't want, you, you always have to use a reference photo when you're doing realistic pieces. If you're just going by memory, then it, it's going to be as realistic as your memory. Most people don't have like super photorealistic or photographic memories. So I always recommend using a reference photo and then also to use a grid so that you can get a very accurate sketch. Having an accurate sketch makes everything so much easier as you go further along. And when you're doing the sketch, 
I would also recommend sketching in the actual for directions and trying to create the layers so you can see it as you're doing the indentations. So you can see here that I have um, the fur directions and like certain squiggly points where the fur is a little bit more uh, crazy. It's already sketched out and you can see it pretty clearly. So it just aids me in creating something that's more accurate and more realistic. Also, what you're also gonna need is you're gonna need a lamp, some sort of uh, small light or whatever that you can move around the page. Um, because with this, the only way you can actually see the indents is by shadow. So you have to be able to move, have a light basically against the page and then casting a shadow on the indentations. If you just have a normal light that's overhead or a window, depending on which way the fur is, like the, the direction of the fur, you might not be able to see it at all. So you constantly have to have a lamp that you can move either up or down or different side to side so that you can see what you're actually doing. I will put all of my tools and material down below in the description. So it'll just be there for you guys. Now, as I had mentioned in my previous video, um, when you're doing the fur, even whether it's long or short, you want the, uh, the, the fur in behind to overlap uh, over top of the stuff in front. So just make sure that it overlaps to create those layers. Now, also, fur isn't perfectly straight usually. It usually has a little bit of curve or twists or turns in it. So make sure you add a little bit of that as well. I, I would always recommend for you to use a reference and then go based off of the reference. Um, certain animals will have straighter fur or straighter hair um, and that's fine. Um, but I find if you do too much of like the spaghetti noodle, just straight hairs, it looks a little bit off. But just look at your reference photo and, you know, go off of that. I don't know everything. Um, the other thing is when you're doing the fur, you push at the base and then as you make your strokes you uh, lighten your pressure to create a natural taper. Um, if you just push with the same pressure all the way you just end up with a spaghetti noodle. So you don't want that. You want to have a natural taper. So make sure you you press harder and then you lighten your hand pressure. Also make sure you do put enough hair. Um, when you're doing it, it may look like you have quite a bit, but when you actually put the pencil on the paper, you do realize that you might, it might be a little bit lacking. So just put, you know, if you think it's enough, maybe add a little bit more. Um, certain areas will require less and other areas will need more. So, but once again, I do think you should go based off of your reference photo. Just do it as it makes sense. As you can see, I'm not putting the lines in those darker colored in areas. Those are the spots and they're going to be black. This technique, it only really works for white or lighter colored fur. So it won't work for the leopard spots. But uh, you'll see what I do with them in a little bit. So now I'm all finished with the scratching so I don't need that lamp anymore. Just using my normal lighting. Um, so now I'm just filling in those spots a little bit darker now. I'm going to make them all black like they should. So I'm just using my pencil to lightly go over it and then I'm going to use a Q-tip to smudge it in a little bit more and then do another layer just to do it like that. Instead of just pushing really hard on my paper it and possibly damaging it. So this way just works a little bit better for me. I do also want to mention that um, this technique, just like I had mentioned in my other video, um, it does help, but it's not everything. You do still need to have a foundation of realism drawing and being able to do fur without this to really make it look realistic. Um, it does help, but with any new technique, there is a learning curve. Like, even if I look back, at uh, my first practice with this technique compared to a more recent one like the lion I did. 
um, there is a huge difference. So as you practice and you learn, uh, you're just going to improve just like with any other drawing skill. So practice is important. So don't be too hard on yourself if uh, it doesn't turn out right away. It does take time. Also, you have to be willing to put the time in. So to do stuff that looks realistic, you do have to put hours and hours and hours on one piece. You can't spend 30 minutes to an hour and expect it to look really, really good and like almost complete. You have to be willing to spend five hours on a four inch by four inch area. You know, it, it does take time and you have to be willing to put in that time to really bring out the detail and really be perceptive to your uh, reference photo so that it matches it and it looks as similar or as realistic as possible. So now I'm going over the white fur areas with my disheveled Q-tip. Um, I'm just trying to add a little bit of color to it, a little bit more depth. Um, so you want to have a base layer go over it with the pencil and then smudge it a little bit just very gently with your q-tip um, or whatever you have a piece of Kleenex or a cotton ball whatever it is um, you, if you do it really lightly then it not too much charcoal or graphite will get into the indents and it'll make it a lot easier to pull that uh, charcoal out with a uh, kneaded eraser so once you get it to the deep enough tone that you want, then you take your kneaded eraser and then you pull out the detail, the, the highlights out of the fur. So you just keep on darkening it, you know, being very gentle. And then now you take your kneaded eraser and then you just pull that charcoal out of the indents and maybe like make clumps out of it, like uh, make it look like the, the fur is clumped together. Um, and then basically you do that for the whole thing. So here you can see I'm just pulling out the highlights on the edge, um, on the edge areas, and then uh, I just move my way up and around and down. Um, there isn't a whole lot for me to add to it right now. It's more of just visual at this point for this area. So I think I'll just let you guys watch it for a little bit, and then I'll come back a little bit later.
Okay, so I'm back now. Um, as you can see, I put in my darker tones where it had to be, and then I started pulling out some of the highlights. And you can really see the layering um, come come together now. Uh, it's hard to tell when you're putting it first putting it together, but when you actually get the, the pencil on, you can really see the layers start to develop, especially if you put the shadows in the right way. Um, you can really see the importance of uh, doing those layers properly and making sure that they overlap for it to really uh, look more realistic like it is. So this just continues for the next little while. Same thing as before. Um, I put down a base layer with the pencil and then I'll smudge it with my with my Q-tip and then add a little bit more, pull out the highlights. Um, it, it, it all basically is the same thing. Just something else I wanted to mention is that if you're using a relatively sharp pencil you do want to use the side of it so angle it pretty shallow so that the point isn't digging into your paper or digging into the grooves. Uh, if you do that then it's going to be a real pain to get that charcoal or graphite out of those grooves with just your kneaded eraser. Um, so just make sure it's very shallow so you're just getting those uh, high points and uh, yeah, that's about it. So now I'm just using a Kleenex to, to smudge it in. Uh, I'm being very gentle though. Um, so I think that's about it for right now. Um, I'll just let you guys watch it and watch it develop. And then I'll come back in a little bit again. And I'm back again. Um, 
So as you can see, this side that I'm working on now is the shadowed side. So on the left side, it's uh, being hit by more light, so it's more white and highlighted. This side is darker and shadowed. Uh, so I had to fill in the base tone a little bit darker, so I just went over it with the pencil and the, uh, the Q-tip a little bit more. And now I'm pulling out a few more of those highlights. So as you can see, the way that I scratched it, I made, I made it look like uh, the fur kind of clumps together in certain ways in certain areas. So this just makes it really easy with the kneaded eraser afterwards to just pull those highlights out and emphasize those clumps of fur a little bit easier. Honestly, the process for doing medium to longer fur is pretty much exactly the same to doing shorter fur. It's just you have a little bit longer strokes. Um, and you know, the other thing which you can see here is I do add a few like squiggles here and there and make the fur go in a little bit different directions. It just adds a little bit more of a natural effect to it. You don't, like I had mentioned, you don't want everything to be going in a straight line. So just make sure that you look at your reference so that you kind of have a rough idea, but it's always good to just throw in a few stray hairs or a few clumps that are going a little bit off than, than normal. Um, it just adds a little bit of character to it, which I think makes it look really good. So we're nearly done here. I'm just going to leave you guys for a little bit and then jump back at the end. So here at the end, I'm just using my pencil to add a few uh, black strands of fur over top of the white fur from those patches. Uh, I'm just doing this so that you can actually tell that it is black patches of fur. Um, it's kind of necessary, so um, that's about it for there. So after this, I'm just going to show the uh, end product after doing a little bit of touching ups and stuff like that. Uh, the whole thing takes like eight hours, so I didn't want to film the entire thing like that, but uh, you'll get to see how it looks after being touched up a little bit. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Um, and, you know, please like and subscribe and comment. I'll try to answer all of your comments. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. And full time-lapse drawing coming soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.